Welcome to r slash pro revenge where OP goes full John Wick. Our next Reddit post is from Philip Hamilton. This happened when I was around 12 or 13 so the details might be a little skewed. Most of my childhood the house right next to ours has been condemned and abandoned. The property owners were willing to sell the land for $200. That's how bad it was. Eventually someone bought it and threw a manufactured home on it to replace the condemned home. Soon, a nice old man moved in next door and we didn't pay too much attention to him because he kept to himself. That was until his daughter moved in with him. Soon, our quiet little neighborhood turned into an episode of white trash and trouble. The daughter would fight her spouse about every little thing and keep my family, along with our neighbors, up half the night. Their kids were the worst part of all. We never knew how many kids lived in that house because so many different kids and adults were in and out of there all the time. Me and my siblings tried to become friends with them, but we ended up being more of their babysitters. They would come over to our house, and each of my siblings had a group of 3-4 to four year old kids to watch over. These kids would walk in uninvited into our house, then steal toys and games from our rooms. Honestly, they stole stuff from all over our house, but this was the main area. They would either take our toys for themselves or throw our toys in our backyard river. They would constantly run in and out of our house, even if no one was with them. They would steal all the fruit in the basket that my mom left for us. My mom confronted them about it and their three-year-old son called her a B-word. The parents refused to apologize for their behavior, saying stuff like, If you loved your things so much, then you wouldn't have let them take it. Or, Don't parent my kid. One thing they would specifically do with me is they pulled on my hair all the time. I'm a tomboy and they would just call me a boy in a wig because girls can't play with skateboards, girls can't play with ninja action figures, or any other gender stereotype. They would constantly bombard me because they truly didn't know girls were allowed to play with anything they wanted. One of their heavier kids stole my skateboard and jumped on it, breaking it in half. Then they said I shouldn't have been playing with a skateboard anyway. There are plenty more examples, but I think you get the point. The neighbors decided that because our house was nicer, they had permission to run an electrical line from our house to theirs. Which in itself is a bad thing, but they decided to run up our electric bill to triple the cost of our original. We were lower middle class and below the poverty level, so we couldn't afford that kind of bill. The rule in our house is, if you're not using it, then turn it off. That's why my parents were awfully surprised to see an $800 electric bill. Eventually, a person from our electric company came out to our house to see what was happening. They found an extension cord running to our neighbor's house. The electrician simply unplugged it and said that should be the end of that problem. My mom politely but sternly warned the neighbors that this was not okay. The neighbor had a small adult tantrum about it and cussed my mom out, but eventually she went back to her house. My mom was obviously not pleased with her behavior, but tried not to escalate the situation any further. Our neighbors tried a few more times to run the line from our house to theirs. Each time we unplugged it. They would cuss us out and send their kids over to destroy something else in our home. Eventually, my mom straight up told them that if they come to our property again, she would call the police and press charges. We could still be quote friends with their kids, but they weren't allowed on our land. They decided that because we won't let them use our electricity that the next best option was to steal our dog from our backyard and claim that our dog attacked her kids. Even though our dog was completely harmless and cowers at everything due to the bad owners before us. So the pound came and took our dog away. By the time my brothers and I got home my dog was already gone. We just assumed she ran off with our grandmothers who lived down the street. When my parents came home, they about lost it learning that our dog was missing. By the time we found her at the pound, they were putting her up for adoption. My parents had to re-adopt our dog because we didn't claim them in time. We even had her tags that say that she belongs to us. The pound told us why the dog was taken and my mom said that enough was enough. Now the revenge. When my mom got home, she sent my little brother over to their house to play with their kids. My brother became a little spy that day. His job was to look around their house and report anything that could be suspicious. We learned from him that they were sitting three kids to a twin bed. The entire house was cramped and dirty. The old man who lived there was hardly home because he couldn't stand his adult daughter who lived there. All around, the kids were being neglected. With the information that my brother gathered, my mom called Child Protective Services on their home. Within a month, all the kids, minus the one that the old man cared for, were removed from the home. While I agreed that the foster system was bad, it was definitely better than what they were going through in that house. 
The mother of those kids started to fight with the old man on everything because her kids were no longer there as a distraction. Her own father was to be her next victim. The old man was eventually fed up with her and kicked her out of the home. All that was left in the home was the old man and the grandson he was fostering. They're both very kind and amazing neighbors. Too long didn't read. Karen took our dog, so we took her kids. Clearly, Karen has never watched John Wick. You never, ever mess with another person's dog. Our next Reddit post is from E is for Elbow Smash. This slow burn starts a full year and a half before my plan came into effect. Earlier in the year, my dad quite sensibly suggested that with the size of our family Christmas party, we skip a generation with the gifts to ease the financial strain as the extended family grew. At the time, I was struggling with my business and athletic career and my wife was working on her second master's degree. So I suggested drawing names from a hat, but my father wanted to spoil all of his grandchildren. I said fair enough, I'll chip in for my grandma's cruise and buy gifts for my step-siblings, but don't expect anything grand. The dramatis personae for this Christmas party are me, a 28-year-old heavyweight mixed martial artist and strength coach. Martha, my 40-year-old stepsister, an aging mom whose only assets are starting to sag too much for them to be assets anymore, leaving her with no other definable personality traits. Jane, who's Martha's 12-year-old daughter. Imagine the most vapid teenager stereotype you can and multiply it by a thousand. Tim, Martha's 9-year-old son. He's living proof that you're never too young to be a butthole. Robert, my 36-year-old stepbrother. He was formerly a cool dude who gave up on his life when his kids were born. Years later, he would gain back enough willpower and gumption to physically assault his wife. Tammy, my stepbrother's six-year-old daughter, a sweet and shy girl, terrified by my mere presence, the wisest of the bunch in my opinion. Bubba, my seven-year-old stepbrother's son, a generally nice kid who at this time was partway into evolving into a butthole after being constantly told to look up to and emulate Tim, his older half-brother. Tammy had brought a Nintendo DS with her, and all the kids were struggling to see it and play it together. So I foolishly offered to loan them mine to lighten the load. Tammy agrees to share with Jane, and Bubba agrees to share with Tim. Having stupidly deprived myself of my means to escape social obligations, I go to the living room to acquire that much older cure for not wanting to deal with other people. Alcohol. Not even having time to pour, my trained ear picks up from the kids' room the unmistakable sound of one human being pummeling another. I politely suggest to my stepbrother Robert that he might want to go have a look. But my stepbro hasn't given an F about anything in about 7 years, so he waves it off and I go to investigate. I walk in to see that Tim may be a butthole, but he isn't untalented and has managed to strike, shove into a wall, and kick Bubba all at the same time while attempting to play my DS with his other hand, having apparently decided that his turn began the moment that I left the room. Jane had simply wrestled the DS from Tammy, who is now sitting in the corner crying. I shout for Martha, informing her that if she doesn't get in here to break things up before I count to ten, I would have a stern conversation with them. Martha turns up and separates the kids and I retrieve my DS. Instead of giving Tim a lesson on sharing and not hitting people, she proceeds to berate Bubba, the kid who was beaten, for not simply giving up the DS to her little piece of garbage and making her son look bad. Jane simply lets out a tween-age sigh for the ages and tosses the other DS to the crying Tammy. I then excuse myself from the party, thinking whatever gods may be that I don't have to provide gifts for any of these little turds. Six months later, my firm belief in atheism is confirmed when my brother Robert calls me and this conversation ensues. Hey OP, while I really appreciate the gifts last year, you should really get something for the kids this year instead. Christmas is all about the children after all. No, I turn up to have conversations with you and dad about my grandma. I really don't give two flips about the kids. That's a mean thing to say about my kids. Don't you care about them? You cared about them so much that at the last party, you couldn't be bothered to break up a fight where your son was being beaten bloody. Tim is a good kid. Martha said he just had a bad day. He was literally beating your child. You didn't put pictures on social media for a week because of the bruises. If Tim were an adult and tried that, I would have pinned him to the floor until the cops arrived. Well, my wife and I were talking, and we think you should buy stuff for the kids next year instead of us. Well, I'm happy to not buy you anything, but I'm not getting anything from Martha's little turds. Especially when she encourages that behavior. Well, if you aren't going to get something for all the kids, you shouldn't get anything at all. It's not right if you don't treat them equally. Done. 
A few months later, about two weeks before Christmas, I get an email from my dad with links to various toys. When I call him back to ask what that's all about, this conversation ensues. Hey, what's up? I got your email. What is this all about? Those are gifts for the kids for Christmas. That's cool if you're getting them that. I'll see them when the kids open them. No, that's for you to get them. I don't buy gifts for that generation, remember? And I already sent you my contribution for Grandma's Cruise. You need to get stuff for the kids. Don't you want them to look up to you as an uncle? Not really. Also, what part of my life suggests to you that they ought to look up to me as some sort of a role model? You'd be better off telling them to grow up to be rock stars. Not the point. Christmas is about the children. If you don't get them this stuff, I won't put your name on that card for Grandma. That's a sucky thing to do considering that I already paid into that. Will you get the stuff or not? Well, I guess my name isn't going on the card then. All these toys will cost me more than a month's rent, so you can take this list and shove it. Calm your jets. This is what they want. I'll get them a token something, but I'm not taking out a loan. Fine, just make it something they enjoy. If what I get doesn't put a giant smile on each and every one of their faces, I'll buy you dinner at a steakhouse if you're choosing. That's the spirit. Talk to you later. So Christmas rolls around and my wife and I have bought not just one, but four gifts for each of the little ones and wrapped them all beautifully. My dad correctly assumes they're all from the dollar store, but they're nicely wrapped and he gives me a look of approval as I place them under the tree. My wife and I schmooze for a bit and then suggest that since we brought several gifts for each of the kids, why don't they open one each before dinner so they have something to do while they wait? Their parents of course agree as it gives them more of a reason to ignore their kids so they send us off to hand out gifts to their kids. Martha is looking especially smug. As they begin to unwrap the presents, I prepare the camera as my wife goes for our coats and I stick around just long enough to immortalize on film the huge grins on each of the kids' faces as they see what the gift is. Less than one minute later, the first blast from the air horn, Tim's gift, can be clearly heard in the hallway as my wife and I make for the elevator. I have no idea how much of the bulk pack of Silly String, Tammy's gift, or the 36 rainbow pack of off-brand Sharpies, Bubba's gift, ended up on the walls. But I do know they repainted the place the next month. Jane got a stack of slap-on bracelets, and I like to think that her parents all ended up in the height of 80s fashion before the evening was over. I may never know if they opened the rest of their presents. Everyone got a copy of each other's gifts. You know, for fairness. Plus a bunch of gross and mildly inappropriate temporary tattoos. In the confusion, none of them noticed me and my wife leaving. I'm certain at some point they did notice the pretty gold envelope addressed to the parents on the tree. Inside was a very pretty card with the following note. This was a warning shot from off the top of my head. I've got a whole year to get creative for the next time. Merry Christmas, signed OP. You know, the ironic thing, OP, is that any 8-12 to 12 year old kid would love these gifts. So while I'm sure the parents were annoyed with you, I bet the kids thought of you as like a hero uncle. That was our slash pro revenge, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.